Kiwi e-waste recovery company Mint Innovation is opening its first commercial scale biorefinery in Sydney that will sustainably recycle precious metals. Joining me now is CEO Will Barker. Welcome, Will. Thank you, Fiona. So this is your first large scale biorefinery. What will its processing capability be? Yeah, it's a, it's a 3,000 tonne per annum plant and it's uh, specifically um, kind of targeted at, at uh, taking all of Sydney's um, uh, electronic waste. And, uh, and, that, and that's kind of the point of the technology is it's fully scalable to take the plant to a city scale um, uh, problem and, uh, and take all of the waste from that city. So Sydney, around about 3,000 tonnes per annum, and that's what we've uh, scaled it for. Why is this one so significant for you? Yeah, it's the first one. Um, we've, been, uh, we've been on a development journey for about six years, um, and uh, it's kind of a, a pretty stereotypical venture-funded journey from test tube all the way up to first commercial. And, uh, and building, you know, building the world's first uh, biorefinery for, for this sort of thing. Um, it's got a great uh, low carbon story. It's got a great circular economy story. Um, and, and it's returning you know, truly valuable, uh, true value back into, uh, into the local economy. So we're super excited. The first, this is the first of many, um, but the first one's always, uh, you know, it's always your favorite. You got a $4.2 million grant from the Australian government to help build this. How useful was that grant and what did the biorefinery cost to build? Yeah, look, um, that is, it's, it's fantastic when uh, governments step in to support this kind of thing. Um, we, we are venture funded and, uh, and, and having support from governments is always going to grease the wheels in, in some way. Um, doing what we're doing, we, we, it's kind of, it's not a no brainer, but, but governments do like to support what we're doing because it's such a good um, story from a, you know, a climate tech, uh, bringing new climate tech to the market is such a, a good news story. Um, it, it, it was a significant uh, part of the cost of the plant. I, I won't go into uh, exactly how much it, uh, it costs, but, uh, but it was a pretty significant uh, um, uh, percentage of the, uh, of the build price. But again, the, the, the kind of the point of this, uh, this plant is a low cost plant that can be built in every city and, and taking those plants in order to do that kind of true distributed model you do need to have very low cost plants so uh, and, and if you've got a bit of government subsidy uh, there as well it, it does make it pretty easy to build these plants everywhere so your next one is in the uk uh, what, what, where's that at yeah um, that's in the pipeline um, we are at the sharp end of uh, securing the site in the uk and uh, and yeah from from here on in we, we just want to um, get plants built quickly. Um, the second one is uh, slightly larger than this one, and, um, and and we'll be processing a good chunk of the uh, of the waste material that's uh, produced in the Midlands of the UK. So, um, in terms of your business model, will will the first two be company owned, and after that, is is are you looking at licensing, or, or what's the situation? Yeah, they will absolutely be company owned, um, and going forward, we. We've got a flexible business model, so um, these because these plants are low cost, we, it does enable us to own, own them ourselves uh, or license to others. Um, and we're looking for high value partners who uh, who, who do want a license. That will be you know the big tech companies who who are taking producer responsibility seriously. Um, the, uh, the the companies who you know have take back schemes for their own electronics. Um, we can we can offer them a solution where we recover all the valuable metals that they can then feed directly back into their um, products. Um, equally, we can work with recyclers, we can build plants alongside recyclers um, and, uh, and, and you know, uh, offer them uh, payment terms that, uh, that exceed what they get today. What about the e-waste stream? I mean, is it growing? Yeah, there's, it, absolutely. So um, I've got some statistics here, which I'll just find, but 50 million tonnes of uh, e-waste uh, produced every year, and uh, that's set to double over the next uh, 10 years. It's truly hor horrifying. Um, 8 billion people on the planet, 84% of them own at least one uh, electronic device. And uh, it is, uh, the, the, you know, these, these things last two, they're designed to last two years. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, the waste created is, uh, is is a hazardous waste material. So uh, so yeah, it's growing year on year. What are the plans for your own waste from the bio refinery? Yep. So we don't produce waste. We produce uh, byproducts, and uh, so we we recover um, valuable metals and we sell those metals. Um, and the uh, the other byproduct streams 
Um, you know, again, the, the, the point of this technology is to be able to go into a city. So we're building um, a city scale plant that's consistent with you know, city, city like infrastructure. So we can't produce waste streams. Um, so we produce byproducts that can then be used um, in local manufacturing as aggregates in roading, for example, in concrete, that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, we don't produce waste streams. Um, where are you at with uh, looking at getting metals from sources other than circuit boards? Yeah, I've been developing uh, technologies. Um, you know, we, we kind of recognise our, our own expertise in, in recovering critical metals from really challenging uh, feedstocks. And we've had an R&D programme uh, running over the last uh, three years for, uh, for, for further metals. So things like catalytic converters contain a lot of palladium, platinum and rhodium. Um, uh, lithium ion batteries, lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese, uh, all critical metals uh, uh, kind of uh, are currently mined, um, which has a massive carbon footprint. And we're able to recover those um, uh, very easily using our low carbon process in the cities where those waste streams are coming from. Um, and uh, and, and the, yeah, those are now progressing through our, our um, kind of rapid uh, prototyping and uh, expect to be commercialising those over the next couple of years. So would the Sydney biorefinery, for example, uh, have to be reconfigured to take that uh, different e-waste? Uh, it certainly can be. Um, at the moment, we're focused on uh, on getting it up and running for circuit boards, but, uh, but the UK plant is likely to have additional uh, trains for, uh, for further waste streams. Mm. Just turning to money, um, which is always important in any, any startup, um, you are undergoing a $50 million raise at the moment? That's correct, yeah, we are raising money at the moment, and uh, it's a, a challenging market to raise money in, but uh, we, we've got really good support, support from our existing shareholders and uh, expect to be closing out at the end of the year. Um, we'd like to bring in some new money as well and, uh, and, and talking to uh, onshore and offshore investors. And, yeah, we've got a very positive story, so it's, uh, it seems to be resonating pretty well at the moment. How hard is it raising money though at this time? Because there's a lot of uh, you know global uncertainty, isn't there? And, and you know a lot of markets have uh, dropped significantly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you recall, I was with Lanzatech previously, and, uh, and and raising money after the GFC um, was uh, was was probably the, the hardest cash raise I went through, and uh, and this one uh, is is is, a, is similar. Um, you know, climate tech is probably insulated to to a degree because. Everybody recognises that, uh, that, that, that these technologies are uh, a very important part of our future, and, and deep tech again to a certain degree um, because it is slightly longer lead time, um, slightly longer development pipeline. So people do have those longer horizons for, for our types of technologies. But uh, yeah, interesting times for raising money. Uh, you were part of the Prime Minister's trade mission to Australia. Um, what was that like, and, and was it worth doing? Oh, absolutely. Look, uh, it's, uh, I mean, for, for one, for one, it was fascinating seeing how these things work. But um, um, to, for, for me right now, uh, we've been, we, it does feel like we've been locked uh, inside uh, New Zealand for a couple of years. And, uh, and, and the challenge for, you know, it's challenging doing business from New Zealand anyway, because we are down in the corner of the, uh, of, of the world. And, uh, and to have that uh, freedom to travel uh, take away for, for the last couple of years is, is, has been challenging. And so I, I think it's critical, vital that uh, New Zealanders do get out uh, and start, you know, I encourage all companies to get out there and remind their customers that, uh, that, that, that we're here because uh, it benefits all of us. So when the, when the Prime Minister delegation um, is an opportunity for us to share our story, you know, we're, we're going to jump on it with, uh, with vigour. So there's a certain cachet with travelling with the Prime Minister, though, that you think uh, helps get more more notice. Of course, very much so. Yes, um, and uh, and and look in Australia, I think all over the world, the, the, uh, the Prime Minister in particular is uh, is is extremely well regarded, and um, and and yeah, there's certainly um, those uh, downstream benefits for us as well. How soon um, once the Sydney biorefinery is up and running before the company hits break even? What's your sort of timetable around that? Yeah, look, we'll be looking to break even um, once the UK plant's um, operational. Um, so this cash flow timing for that is twenty twenty three. Yeah, so next year. So um, uh, so this cash raise should be our last cash raise. 
and, uh, and, and yeah, looking to break even. Um, yeah, exponential growth beyond the UK uh, may require more funds, but uh, but yeah, these 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 little gold mines are um, you know they they they're good at generating cash. So, how many buyer refineries do you have an idea in your head? How many you want by a certain time frame? Uh, yeah, look, our, our mission is to get these um, buyer refineries into every city around the world. Um, circuit boards and uh, lithium ion batteries, uh, taking these these plants to the waste streams. And uh, and you know we we we've got we've got aspirations of, of of many many hundreds, but realistically we we believe we can achieve at least fifty um, in the next five years. All right. Well, thanks very much. We're welcome.